Well, joining us now from outside the Scottish Parliament is Edinburgh's, uh, in Edinburgh is Scotland's First Minister, Alex Salmon. Alex Salmon, um, reading the White Paper, you conjure Good a evening, vision... John. Good evening, uh, Alex Salmon. Um, reading the White Paper, um, you conjure a vision of school children learning God save the Queen, Bank of England keeping interest rates right and sterling safe, um, old maids relaxing to uh, songs of praise and strictly come dancing, um, while a solid military alliance with America keeps you safe. Rather than a referendum, have you thought of moving to Bournemouth? Well, I, I think also you should mention the better deal in pensions, the transformation in childcare, the additional jobs in the economy, bidding the, uh, bidding the bedroom tax. These are all on offer as well because the importance of this document, John, it doesn't just tell us how we'll get to independence, it tells us how, what we can do with that independence. And it's on these issues, the issues that matter to, to families, the length and bread for Scotland, that we'll have the positive vision which will, will win this campaign. But you could sort childcare, for example, right now. You have the powers to do it. If you want to bring in 30 hours of childcare uh, for three and four year olds, you could do it right now. Well, we've moved from 400 hours to 600 hours under devolution, but to get to the sort of transformation, the sort of Scandinavian levels of childcare provision, then that would bring, we believe, uh, about 100,000 women back into the workforce. That will generate £700 million of revenue. Under devolution, that goes straight into the maw of George Osborne and the Treasury, just like the oil revenues. Under independence, that will help finance the policy. That's exactly why we need independence to introduce transformational policies like the offer on childcare. Well, you raise oil revenue, and indeed it's all looking very rosy until about 2018, and then it begins to come back down again. And within 20 years, won't be producing the sort of money that you're banking on. And if you were part of the United Kingdom, that wouldn't be so painful. But for Scotland alone, it's going to be very painful. Well, over the next 40 to 50 years, in terms of wholesale value, there's more value of oil to come out of the North Sea than has come out already. And the OBR suggests that after 2040, there'll be only residual oil and gas left. Bit of a surprise to the Kraken field, which was just announced two weeks ago, which will still be producing in the 2040s. So there's a great deal more of our natural resources to come. But I agree that the challenge for us now is to build up renewable resources which will last forever and to get our economy onto a fast growth position, which will generate the revenues, broaden our industrial base and take us to that growing future. Yeah, but you see, the thing surely about independence is it's economic independence. And the idea that in some way you will allow the Bank of England to set your interest rates, that is effectively what's going to happen. Uh, the Bank of England will be the lender of last resort too. Um, and therefore, they're going to want to have a very strong say about the way your banks are run. That isn't independence. Well, I, mean, I think uh, independence comes from fiscal policy, control of taxation and spending. And in the childcare example, uh, I gave a very good example of why you need control of both sides of that balance sheet. In terms of being lender of the last resort, I think that's a, a sensible proposal because the, the financial sector that's concerned operates in Scotland and England. In fact, operates far more in England uh, than it does in Scotland. Well, it's entirely the, reasonable why, why bank... to have the Bank of England as the monetary authority. But why should the Bank of England be remotely interested in doing a deal with you over the way in which it runs policy? Because they would have to be the lender of last resort for these institutions anyway. I mean, for goodness sake, the Royal Bank's in public ownership at the present moment. Yeah, uh, but, but of course, you're they never are going to be, for a sterling area. You're never going to be the lender of last resort unless you can lay down the absolute limits within which your banks can operate. And that is not independence. Well, actually, John, the banking sector is moving under the Vickers reforms to not to take out country risk and to make the banks self-sustainable. But the lender of the last resort for the banking sector is not affected by the control of fiscal tax and spend policy to transform the, the Scottish economy. I mean, Luxembourg and Belgium, for example, had a, a monetary union for, for a generation before the euro and they had different tax and spend right. policies in different aspects of their economy and a perfectly healthy relationship. The argument for a, a currency union, the argument for a sterling area lies in the fact that England's our biggest market and Scotland's England's okay. second biggest market. Well, let's look at immigration because you're very exciting about immigration. You really want to grow immigration in Scotland. You only have 7% of your population is in any way foreign born. Uh, Britain generally has 13%. How are you going to bring them in? How many do you want and where are they going to come from? 
Well, you're quite correct. We want to grow the working age population, not just with immigration, incidentally, but also we're giving young Scots the opportunity to work in their own country. Yeah, but you specify which is absolutely immigration. Vital. But, you but specify. we also want to, hmm. for example, yes, we also want to, for example, John, uh, allow many of the, you know, the 30,000 skilled youngsters that we are educating from overseas, international students, if they so wish, to work and contribute to the Scottish economy. That's what we want to do, to grow our society, to grow our population. That's the way forward. Yep. So as we can overcome the challenges of demography that are affecting every European nation. And the great thing is that lots and lots of people want to become and work and be part of the Scottish experience. And why on earth shouldn't we welcome that? Alex Salmon, thank you very much indeed. And we'll be closely with you over great the next pleasure. nine months until September the 18th, 2014. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, John.